Yes, welcome back to The Tonight Show. And my next guest, uh, well, he's the star of a very, very popular show, Quincy, uh, which will be on the air tomorrow night here on NBC. Please welcome Jack Klugman. <laughs> I mean, there's a really not. You got a guy who plays the greatest trumpet in the world. She sings like a dream. And now Mario Lanza. <laughs> the only thing I can do, I can perform an autopsy. You know? <laughs> that's, that's terrible. Look at this talented group. You're my friend. You're a fellow Philadelphia. Yeah. And look what you tangle me up with here. I figured Paula come out. He'll go in and talk. Yeah. He imitates. He Jack, sings. I thought the same thing. <laughs> you want him to make you look I good. Was go I thought he's going to be the one to make us shine. That's it. But he came out. He's, he's got too it. much talent. Out. He's out. Go back to New York. <laughs> really are brilliantly talented, all of you. OK, yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> I paid my dues. All right, yeah, now. We're like all neighbors. You know, I, I, like a neighbor. Because we, we're, you're from where? I'm from 4th and Dickinson. Seven of March. 4th and so, Dickinson is already a whole different area. Look at this. <laughs> in, in South Philly, right. Yeah. yeah, we were. Yeah, we're closer to the river. More river no, so people. I'm old enough to be your father, David. I have to yes. tell the truth. I don't yes. look it. But no, I you am. don't at all. <laughs> you don't look it at all. But we're... You have a brother that's about my... Uh, my age. brother is uh, an August. Is guy. I'm, my, I'm a late in life child. My mother changed life twice before I was born, give you an idea. <laughs> I my, thought you were born older. That's not, late in life. What's my that? brother could be my father. My brother's uh, uh, 59. He's, gonna, he's 59 years old, my brother. You were planned? He looks great. No, I wasn't planned, yeah. <laughs> sure, like, like World War II was planned. That's how I was planned. <laughs> sure, I was planned. <laughs> One bottle of scotch, that was the planning. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but the neighborhood, the neighborhood... In Philadelphia, it was yeah. Green River. It wasn't yeah. uh, scotch. That's yeah. right, that's right. But the neighborhood is... You go back, you know, I went back there to get a cheesesteak at Pat's, and they said, you know who was here last night? Jack Klugman was here and got a cheesesteak. So you're back in they the neighborhood, They could tell, too. because after I ate it, I felt... <laughs> no, but that's great. I know when I go back, I don't know whether it's nostalgia or what it is, but whenever I go back to Philly, I love it more and more. Friendships yes, yeah. have lasted. I you know I just passed my 60th birthday, and I just love it more than I ever have. Yeah, well, you're a real Philadelphian, too. You talk like a... It's, where's Quincy from? What do you from, mean right? I talk like You, you have the funny way of talking. <laughs> <laughs> and you talk like Oxford? <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, um, Where's Quincy from? If Quincy? You're from you're from Seventh and Mars, right? Seventh and Mars, is it? Yeah. All right, so where's Quincy? Quincy's from everywhere. There, Quincy. Anybody who cares about injustice. See, I, this man is a is a, a superhero. I mean, he's created because we need him. I mean, we in America need somebody to fight City Hall and they're going to fight all the injustices, and that's what he he is, and that's how he's been created. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's everywhere. Somebody says, "Hey, that's wrong, and that should be corrected." And that's the role he plays, right? Yep, that's what, he would, that's what it's about. And you start tomorrow night. You brought a clip with you for, uh, yeah, well, for the show, right? Well, it happened with it. about a year ago. Michael Braveman, one of our writers, wrote a, a segment. He read about a guy who had killed a couple of members of his family. He went into an institution. He was then, because he got off by, innocent by reason of insanity. Yes. He went in, he did a couple of years. He got out, and with the advice, they said, stay away from your mother. <laughs> and a week later, he killed her. Oh, yes, I and, remember and, this case. Uh, yes. He was fascinated, and so this was terrible, and he did a lot of research on it, and he came up with a story, which is a parallel, except for the mode of the crime, it parallels the Hinckley case. And when I got into it, and I began to do the research with him and found out about it, I realized it's wrong. There are three states that have a law called, and they've gotten rid of that, innocent by reason of insanity, because you can't give a determinate sentence. He goes into an institution, and twice a year, he can get out if they think he's sane. This, you, could get, you say guilty but mentally ill. Indiana, Michigan, Illinois have it. Yeah. Yeah. So if you, you found guilty but mentally ill, you get, say, 20 years to life. But you still go to an institution, you still get help. But after three years, if you're pronounced sane, you finish your sentence. Of the rest of the time. Listen, yeah. I believe yeah. in a very, very strong. But there's something, uh, there's something to say about the idea of murdering another human being is not exactly a sane act in itself. So therefore, anyone who does it has got to be a little off. Now, I don't mind crazy people 
See, I don't mind like a crazy who comes up to me and he licks your face or something. Okay. <laughs> you say he's off, you know what I mean? He's uh, off, he thinks he's a St. Bernard. Not you, Apple. Uh, <laughs> and, you, and, you, and you put him away, fine. And he's cured. But, and the but the guy who originally. blows someone apart, but Fine, the law you know. originally was intended for person. that, you see, for the people who were truly mentally ill. But you can't, if you get 10 psychiatrists, all honest, honorable people, right. five say he was sane, five say he was insane. So now that's a toss up, and that's right. a gamble. Gambling I know about. Yeah. Who gets the edge? <laughs> yeah. why, give it, why not give the innocent law abiding citizen the edge for change instead of the guy who went out and killed a couple of people? Yeah. And that's what I mean. We're going to take a little break here, and then we're going to come back and see the clip and talk more with Jack Klugman right after this message. I want to say, uh, briefly, I want you to tell me another, another area of your life. Okay, what do you want to know? How are you doing at the track? <laughs> I like when guys say, how are they treating you? Me, they don't treat. I got to pay. I can't get a winner to save my life. There's a guy, Matty, he's got a restaurant here. He does, he's... He does terrible things. I mean, he... Matty. I got, you know, Matty, right? I, 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 that's right, yeah, yeah, that's I right. went there. I was supposed to bet on a tight one. I bet on a fourth one. He came in first. I hit myself in the head. I still got the headache. <laughs> he lost on a horse, and a guy had had a heart attack was being wheeled out. He said, you don't know how lucky you are. You don't know it should be me. Went up to another guy. He said, good, strangle me. The guy said, good, go ahead. Keep, choke me till I can't talk no more. Well, he no, learned good. it all from me. I can't pick a can't winner. Win one? Just, I just. I'm Why not... do you go against your instincts? My instincts. That's what makes me lose. Go against them. Go against every instinct. Go against all your intelligence. Everything you believe in. If I had any in... intelligence, I wouldn't be going to the window betting there. Are you kidding? I... It's just unbelievable. Or why don't you get a fake window, like someone in your family? <laughs> And go up in bed, and they take it, and they give you money back, you give them money back, and it doesn't cost you a dime. Holy huh? But uh, when I win, they won't pay off. Yeah. That's what families are for. <laughs> <laughs> you got to save the money. You can't. Oh. I bet once at Garden State, and uh, when I was a kid, a guy came up to me. He must have been 80 years old. I thought anybody who has white hair was wise to me when I was a kid. He said, "Blue boy, blue boy in the fifth, old man, tottering. I collected money from everyone, everyone. Put it on." He's still running. <laughs> the gray-haired man. And the horse. The horse came out. It must have been, he must have grown up with this man. Like, <laughs> the worst I know about it. Oh, I right. do it. Oh. Oh, the worst. We're going to take a little break and come back right after this message.